What if there were a place where you were genuinely wanted, truly accepted, and authentically loved? A place where friendships were real, support was unconditional. A place where you were heard, encouraged, empowered. A place where real faith in Jesus became a lifestyle. It's couches, porches, and kitchen tables. It's stories shared and moments worth remembering. It's hoping and praying and taking chances. It's jokes and laughter and shoulders to cry on. It's questions and answers and I don't knows. It's knowing you don't have to figure it all out by yourself. It's messy and imperfect. It's giving and serving and growing better together. It's life, and we weren't meant to do it alone. Life is better together. Join a small group today. Giving is easy and safe with our giving platform powered by SecureGive. Giving can be done from anywhere with your computer, tablet, or your mobile device. To give, simply go to the church's website, create a new account, or log in with your existing account. Simply select one time or recurring gift. Select your donation amount, enter your payment info, and then confirm your information. Visit our website and click on the giving button to learn more. Maybe you're an iOS or Android user. If so, you have an additional opportunity to streamline your giving with the free SecureGive app. Simply search SecureGive in the App Store or Google Play Market. Once downloaded, open the app and search our church name to save as your home organization. Just like with online giving, you can create a new account or use your existing SecureGive account to log in, give, and connect with us. But wait, did you also know there is now a way to participate in generosity in a way that's as easy as texting a friend? With text to give you can give using your mobile device by following these three easy steps. Number one, text the keyword and amount you'd like to give to our church's text to give number. Number two, follow the series of prompts and set up your secure give text to give account. Here, choose your desired payment method. And finally, number three, save the number as a contact in your phone for future use. Text to give only takes seconds to use and is the perfect way to connect with our ministry through giving. As you know, faith is not a destination. Faith is a journey. And some of you are pretty far along on that journey. But others of you may have a lot of questions. You may be at the very beginning of your faith journey. And the church, well, the church is the last place you think to speak up or ask your questions or voice your doubts. So let's change that. Starting point is where questions about God turn into conversations about faith, about your faith. It's a place where you can actually voice your doubts and explore some of the trickiest topics of faith, free from pressure and free from judgment. You see, we'd rather talk with you than at you. 
and starting point is where that happens. So if you're ready, let's talk. So, things haven't turned out as you hoped. Life took a turn. A bump. A darkened sky. And at times, it may have seemed there was no hope. But here's the good news. Our God is the God of fresh starts. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Our God brings new mercies, new compassions, not just once a year, not just when things are bad, but every single morning. This season has been tough. And for many of us, things will never be the same. But we are here, breathing, maybe smiling, or crying, or shouting, or laughing. But we are here. Feeling. Maybe fighting, or cheering, or seeking, or grieving, but we are here, living, and we are not alone. Our God is here. Our God is with us. And our God is the God of new creations.
Happy New Year. From my home to yours. It's a little different this morning, isn't it? But, uh, uh, you know, the New Year is a time for new beginnings, and we're excited about how, how God is moving to make changes here and uh, the direction that he's leading us into. So I just want to share a couple of songs that are kind of setting the tone for me right now. And I hope they will do that for you too. As we move into this new year together. You're turning all the tables and calling for return to our lives upon the altar. The things we did at first. You're clearing out the temple. You're cleaning out the dirt. For we are your territory. Lord, we are your church. Make 
God, we need we surrender. So we re surrender. If you're calling, we're coming. Not walking, we're running. God, we need we surrender. So we re surrender. If you're calling, we're coming. Not walking, we're running. God, we need we surrender.
Well, Happy New Year, everybody. It is so great to be here with you. Donna and I thought we'd do something a little different for New Year's Day. And so she met you from her home, and now I'm greeting you from our home. This is my office. This is where I spend a lot of time reading and studying and writing and praying for you guys because you mean the world to me. It is a new year, and... A whole new beginning. Now, I don't know what you did last night. Some of you probably stayed up to watch the ball drop. Some of you probably said, nah, they're just going to sleep. I remember growing up as a kid where we would we would try to stay up for the ball. You know, mom and dad would we'd get to a point where we could finally, yeah, sure, allowed to stay up till midnight. And mom and dad would uh, make all these snacky foods to keep us awake. You know, so we'd eat snack through the night. And and then try to play games and all that kind of stuff just to keep us awake till we can see the ball drop. And as a kid, that's fun. You know, it's like, oh, it's the end of the new year, but you don't realize the impact till you get older where it's another year gone, but yet there's a whole new year beginning. It's, it's a new start. It's a, it's a fresh start. And although it's just another day in the calendar year, somehow in our minds we think, okay, this is a new year. I can make some changes. And there's challenges with that. There's there's challenges of change. You know, what what will happen if I do this? What will this look like? Or if I don't do this, what will it look like? You know, when we start making changes, it, it's it's funny how we, we often gravitate towards the physical. Not sure why. Maybe that's the easiest. Maybe it's something we see. So a new year, and maybe some of you are like, I'm going to start that new diet, okay? or I'm gonna start my exercise program, or I'm gonna go down tomorrow and I'm gonna go join the gym, and you're all excited about that, and and that's great, and physical is important. But there's other areas of our life that are critical as well. We are physical beings, and physical body is very important, especially if, if we consider ourselves a child of God, and we've trusted in Jesus Christ. The, these bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we should be taking the best possible care of this body we can, shouldn't we? And that means watching what we eat. It means a a healthy diet, watching our nutrition intake, making sure we're getting all all the nutrition we possibly can get that we need. That's important. Taking care of our physical our physical body in ways of exercise and and keeping in, in shape so that we can be the best we can be physically. I was actually reading an article this morning that was talking about the 10,000 steps because a lot of people, that's your, that's the goal. It's like, oh, you know, I got my new watch, check, check my steps and going to be counting 10,000 steps, you know, every day, making sure. And the whole article was about, that's great, but that's just a movement goal. That should not be your exercise goal. And I was like, wow, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? But our bodies, they, they need to move. They need to exercise. We need to keep our muscles in tune and we need to get them in shape and that affects so many other areas of our body but more than physical we're also emotional people there's an emotional side of us that that has huge impact in our lives it it controls whether we stick to our diet or whether we stick to our exercise plan because a lot of times like i just don't feel like it that's emotional and our emotional health is probably even more important than our physical health And then you take the side of the spiritual health and how important it is. In our small group this past year, we've been doing a study called Follow. And we talk about Jesus' call to follow him and what that means. And one of the the sessions, the teaching lessons we were dealing with, Jesus talked about how our spiritual life could get to a place where our spiritual health could be so strong that it could overshadow what we're going through in our physical life and our emotional life. And that just boggles my mind that we could be that healthy in a spiritual way that no matter what we're going through in the physical world, even he, you know, he used the point of being, being beaten and tortured as he was talking to his disciples. That that wouldn't matter because if we're in a place spiritually, 
it just, it wouldn't have that impact on us no matter what was happening to our bodies. Can you imagine living life like that? Or that our spiritual life was so healthy that it would overshadow any emotional stuff that we're going through. A sickness or a death or a loss. That's wild. So as we go into this new year, I thought I'd just take a few minutes just to challenge you in these three areas. To challenge you in your physical life. Are you doing what you can do physically? And what kind of changes do you need to make this coming year? To challenge you in your emotional health. How are you? Are you emotionally healthy? And what does that mean? What does that even look like? But as you look at your life and what's controlled you over this past year, how much has your emotional health played a role in it? And then, of course, your spiritual life. You know, at North Point, we're going through some changes. And I'm excited. I really am. I am so excited about the potential of, of getting beyond our four walls, getting beyond what we've been doing and what we've gravitated in towards for so many years. And it's not that it was wrong. It just, it's not working anymore. We're in a different world, a different culture. Things have changed. And for a lot of people, you know, they just want to keep, we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing and we'll hope that, you know, we'll get through it or we'll get over it or whatever else. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that. I want God to use me. I want him to use you in ways that we could never even imagine. And I know it starts with our relationship with Jesus Christ, with, with growing deeper. We need to grow deeper. We need to grow more intimate with God. I mean, that's what Jesus came. He said, I, I came that you may know the Father. He wants us to have a deep relationship with himself and with his Father. So I know we need to grow deeper. I, I know I need to grow deeper. And not only deeper individually, but deeper collectively. I mean, Jesus' strategy from day one was to gather a handful of people and to have such an impact in their lives that that impacted those around them. And it did. And you and I are here today because of them. Because not only the relationship they grew in with Jesus, but the relationship they grew in with one another. That's why I'm a firm believer that smaller communities is critical for our spiritual growth as a church, but also individually. We need people in our lives that are just holding us accountable. Hey, are you reading? Hey, what is God doing into your life right now? Where are you seeing God work in your life? And where would you hope that God would work more? We need to grow deeper in our smaller groups. We just do. I know we need to grow deeper in, in just our understanding and our enrichment of what it really needs to just put ourselves aside and to focus in on God. And so we're going to have some nights of worship where we literally just say, you know what, let's just focus in on God. Let's, let's read scripture together. Let's, let's sing together. Let's direct that towards God. Let's tell stories of what God is doing in our lives and how he's changing things. One of the things I continue to get amazed at how easily people want to share their stories and want to share their lives. And so the changes that we're making this year is one, we need to get better at small groups and doing life together. We need to get better at just coming together just to focus in on God, not ourselves, not what we want, not what we're trying to get out of it, but just giving ourselves to God for the night. And we're going to be doing that out in the community, out around where where people are, yes, but, but just utilizing other facilities that are there, that we can just support by being there and being a part of it, but that could gather people maybe from that area of the city because that's where we're gathering. And it gives us opportunity to invite some friends who, who are believers or maybe who are at that phase of their life where it's like they would come out to a night of worship. So those are two areas. Another area that I'm, I'm obviously a firm believer in, but I know how important it is to, to Jesus because he told us it was. And it was important to Paul. 
as he passed down his, his knowledge and his wisdom to Timothy. And that's the teaching of the Word of God. Because the Word of God is what changes us. The Word of God is what penetrates our hearts and our souls and our minds. And, and that's what God uses. And so the teaching of the Word can, can never go away. It can, it, we can change it. We can change the form in which we present it. But it's the very Word of God that is going to cut through and make, make the changes that God wants to in our lives. It's the Word of God that gives us a basis for truth so that we know what's right and what's wrong. We know what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And that truth never changes. In a culture that's continually changing around us, that truth holds firm. And so what we're going to be doing is on Thursday nights, we're going to invite you all in to come and, and be there while we record our time together. The teaching of the word, we're going to sing some, maybe we'll tell some stories, we're going to do some things a little different, but we're going to record on Thursday nights with a band, sometimes not, and then we're going to re-air that on Sunday mornings. And so on Sundays, we're not going to be live anymore where it's in person, we're going to just be there with you guys on the screen and, and with a live host that'll be there at 10 a.m. on Sundays because that's where we're going with to, to start out. And where that leads, I don't know. It's just something different. It's trying something new and in a different way to, to do church. So I'm excited about it. I, I hope you will be too. I, I know it gives us a different opportunity to invite people to because honestly, Sunday mornings does not seem to be the greatest draw. It just doesn't. Not like it used to be. And so let's try something new. Let's, let's mix it up a bit. And how cool is that? And you know what? If it continues to just grow our Sunday online audience and people who watch during the week, because some of you I know are not watching New Year's Day, you're watching this during the week. And that, that's cool. That's great. Because I continue to get amazed of how many people watch after, even after the week has gone by. And maybe you're one of them. You're part of our church. You're part of our church community. And so we're just seeing ourselves as more than just one area of focus, but multi-areas. So Thursday night, come join us live. Join us Sundays, join us again, and, again, and talk to each other, communicate as we chat together on our church online site. That's gonna be cool. What most excites me, though, is one of our struggles I think we have is we struggle with being out in the community, being out in the world. And, and I don't know about you, but that can be overwhelming. It can be scary to meet new people, to, to put ourselves out there, I guess is a way of saying it, of, of, of meeting strangers and trying to build relationship with the hope and desire that one day God would lead us into a, a relationship where we can lead them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Or we can point them to a person that could be that person that could do that. But if we're going to follow Jesus' command to go and reach the world, we have got to meet as many people as possible. We just do. And so why don't we do it together? Instead of just expecting us to do it at work or, or in our families or, or building relationships with teams or clubs that we belong to, why don't we do it collectively? And in that process, why don't we support our community our community you know the binghamton the binghamton area this whole southern tier area there is so much going on and there are so many good things going on and why not as a church as church people why don't we just why don't we help support what's already happening not reinventing the wheel but but coming alongside an organization like like big brother big sister or, or moms and babies or or the YWCA, or any, any of the organizations that are out there, and, and just say, hey, we just want to uplift you. We want to support you. We're going we're gonna to host this event. We're going to invite people out. We're going to invite you to invite people out. And we just want to give you an evening to share about who you are and what you're about. And if we can enter into a way to serve them and be a part of that beyond that, we will do that too. But how cool if we could just raise up the things that are already happening in our community and expose them to others who have never seen or, or, or heard about them, including ourselves. What if the church was just the church? Just loving on people and seeing what God would do with that. 
And that excites me. Where we could rent somewhere like a beer tree or or um, one of the restaurants and run one of the back rooms and just say, hey, we're doing a community impact night here and we're just raising up this community of, of this organization, what they do, and invite everybody out. And people are like, what's going on there? We'll just say, hey, we're just here to support whatever cause that is. That's cool. And who that introduces us to? I don't know. But you'll have opportunity to interact with people that you may never have had that opportunity to act interact with before and who knows what God will do with that but in the process we will be able to support things in our community that are doing some really great stuff the other area in connecting to that is we are launching a platform and this comes out on Instagram and probably some other platforms as well where we're calling it stories of the southern tier and as people sharing their stories, sharing how God has changed their lives. But for some, it's just sharing how their lives have changed, what they've gone through. Our hope and desire is that as some of you share your stories, as others we get to know share their stories, that God will impact more and more people's lives when they hear how God is changing their lives or how God has changed their life. That connects with people. People want to not only hear what God is doing because it makes it more real, but people want to share their stories. And so I'm excited about the potential for this. This especially connects us with a younger generation. And I don't honestly, I don't understand how all that stuff works. I don't understand Instagram and all that stuff. And, but I just know if we want to connect to the next generation, we have to start using their methods. And so tying those stories then to community impact nights, that can open up so much possibility of building up people's lives, of building up organizations and stuff in our community, and then the possibility of building new relationships that hopefully more people will find Jesus Christ. You know, why, why do we need change? <laughs> You know, it's funny, when I, when I think about change and how <laughs> adverse we are to it, because we all are. We, we don't, you know, we, we like our living room the certain way. We like the remote there, and we like things in our refrigerator a certain way, and we like, we just like how we do things and our schedules and everything else. And yet, the very essence of the Christian life is all about change. It really is. Maybe that's why we're so adverse to it, because Christ came along and said, I, I want to mix things up. I want you to have a new life in me so much better than you ever had before. And the things I can do through your life, you can't even imagine. Just let me try. That's the Jesus that we follow. He said, I, I came to give you new life. New life in him. And that new life will not only change your life, but it will impact other people around you as you share how he has changed your life. So why do we change? <laughs> because it's part of who we are as Christians. And we're challenged to do our very best for God. I love what Paul said. He said this, I got it written down here. It says, concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of laying out the truth plain and simple now it ties into the word of god obviously but it's do your very best for god the word do your best is is the word be diligent be diligent like intentionally do your best one of the things about the new year is a lot of us set goals, and that's awesome, that's great. But what really changes us is not the goals we set. It's the new patterns we create in our lives, the new habits we form. And so this year, I want you to focus in and to think, how am I creating new habits that'll help me grow physically? That'll get my body in, in better shape that honors God? 
What new patterns am I putting into my life that'll help me get a better handle on myself emotionally so that I am in control of my emotions, not my emotions are in control of me? And how will you know? <laughs> You'll know in a few weeks when you are tempted to give up those exercises or whatever else you put into place if you're emotionally healthy, along with other areas. And then spiritually, what are you putting into place spiritually that'll change, that'll help you to grow? We're making some strategy changes as a church. Doesn't change the mission, doesn't change the message. It just, it changes how we're doing things, that's all. So what are you gonna change that'll help you grow spiritually? Maybe some of you aren't in a small group. Why? Why? <laughs> you know, you want to been want to been in Jesus' small group. You want to like the people in it. You want to like the challenges he gave. You want to like how he talked to his disciples at times. When he's like, how much longer am I going to put up with you? That's Jesus. Why do we do it? Because we know that other people will challenge us and help us to grow. We know because just Jesus did it. Some of you, it's, it's, it's a regular habit of, of, of just coming together with us as a community on a Sunday morning where we can just, hey, chat and hang out as, as, we, as we watch the service and, and time together. Some of you, it's going to be like, you know what? Sundays was not something I could put on my schedule every day. But Thursdays, man, I'll be there every Thursday. I just want to be a part of that. And we got a new location, which we're going to be sharing with you um, in the weeks ahead. And I'm just excited about it as uh, that's for our Thursdays. Though. That's not the big stuff that's just one area what do you need to do and i know like i don't have time i don't i can't do this or we all have the same amount of time it's just how we want to prioritize it to so do something different for some of you it means you know what tomorrow or even today you're going to go rearrange your living room furniture just because you need to change up something some of you need to take down the the paintings on the wall and paint your bedroom different color Make change a regular part of your life. And then that will help us to grow in our physical, emotional, and spiritual changes that God needs to work in us. We're beginning a new series next week. It's called Take Five. Five, that's it. And we're going to be talking about five essential core elements of the spiritual life that you cannot live without one of them. And if one of them is missing, you're missing what it means to grow and to follow Jesus Christ. And so we're going to begin it next week. I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll be there. Uh, we'll be there at our, our current facility on Thursday night recording. Welcome to come in and be a part of that. And uh, if not, join us Sunday. And I hope you'll join us again on Sunday morning. What I want to do is give you a challenge as we go into this new series, as we go into a new year. And that's to take five. Five minutes a day in the Word of God. You could download an app. You could set up a devotional, however you want to do it. Five minutes in the Word of God. If you're new to the Scriptures, start in the New Testament. Start with the Gospels. Start with the Book of Acts. Start in the New Testament. Get to know the New Testament really well. And then five minutes in prayer. Five minutes in the Word. Five minutes in prayer. Take five. Take five minutes in both of those areas with God every day. Prayer, you know what? Make a list. Just start with a little small list. That's how I do it. And and it helps. It helps when I know, hey, I gotta pray for such and such. And when something comes up in their lives, like even one of our kids or or my wife Julie or something's going on, I could just put a little note next to that. And I say, Oh yeah, that's right, I gotta remember to pray for that. Well, one of you guys have a request. And I hope you I hope you continue just to share your prayers. That's what the connection card tab is for. Just click on that, share a prayer. That goes on the list and says, hey, I'm going to be praying for you in that area of your life. Keep us up to date. Let us know. Five minutes in the Word, five minutes of prayer. That's the Take 5 Challenge that we're going to be challenging you for the next seven weeks as we go into this new series. So thanks for joining with us this New Year's Day or later in the week. So cool what we can do now with technology. But I wish you the happiest new year. This is going to be a great one. I really believe God is going to do amazing things in your life and in the life of us as a church. A challenge? Yes. But that's okay. We're ready for that, right? 
Happy New Year. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.